Welcome back onto the bridge, Warco. We've spotted an enemy merchant ship. Well, I'm not sure it's enemy, but let's make our... Can you give me, please, 30 degrees to port? But it certainly looks that way because she is running without lights, and it is nighttime. And that is particularly interesting to us because we just passed a merchant ship which um, was running with lights on, and it happened to be Norwegian. Now we don't have that many uh, shells left in our gun. A lot has actually happened since the last time you were on the bridge. In fact, we've sank an additional two ships, which I've highlighted here. And I'll probably have to go through this mess, <laughs> this maze of... Well, it's really just our course that I'm plotting and I'm keeping track of times that we dived for hydrophone checks. All that, let's just put all that on hold for a little while while we successfully plot the, de the demise of this merchant ship. And I believe that due to the fact we have very few torpedoes left, it's high time for, I mean, very few deck gun shells left. It's high time that we used our torpedoes. I'm going to get a relative bearing from it. It looks like a, it's going to route 30 degrees. So we're just going to draw 30 degrees for a while. And I know that it's quite possible she'll change course. But please, in the meantime, can you give me a course around 30 degrees? This will put our tail to her. I'm going a little bit... Um, west of 30 degrees because she's a little bit east of us and that will put us practically in a line with her our hull will be practically in a line with her reducing our um, the width of our vessel, vessel to her so basically what I'm trying to say is if she is off in this direction which maybe she is we're currently leading with our entire uh, our entire hole is to her, which means we're very visible. But after executing this turn, we can go ahead and run all standard. Ahead standard, pardon me. And uh, with this, we should become less and less visible. So hopefully, as long as she doesn't spot us, and possibly even if she spots us during this turn, we'll, we'll be avoiding her for, I think, long enough that it won't matter. And she's such a good distance away, I can't even find her easily with the Uzo. So eventually she's going to end up 180 to us. No, nope, we're already past that, so it's 190, I think. I don't see her. Nothing on the Uzo for me. And I'm guessing that she should be... Okay, so obviously this is not the course we're running at. I prefer to make the changes... I mean, this is more realistic for me to make changes like this, but I prefer to make them with our plot course navigation tool. Uh, just because then it's easier to see. Like Now I have to zoom all the way in to see what our course is. And she's definitely not 180. She's definitely more like 140, I would say. Let's look for her over here. I don't see her. There she is. Wow. Wait, well, I hit the nail on the head with 140, but she's invisible to me, which means that we are invisible to her. Or so the story should go. Very good. Now what we're going to do is try to... Now there's two ways of making a torpedo run. Uh, you can use the Uzo or your periscope to, like I've done before, do the ranging on a ship you've identified. Uh, we don't have that option because we haven't locked on. We ha we don't ha have an uh, excuse me. We don't have an identification for this ship. There's another way, which is more cheaty because we use the map. We can actually time her progression using the stopwatch on the Uzo, for example. Uh, we can just take a, a quick point there. And start our stopwatch. We can just simply record how far. Damn it. <laughs> okay. All right, reset that one. Let's try this again. So out here, Uzo, click. I wanted to move this. Damn, it's not moving. OK, 
Okay, I guess you can't move it here. I thought I was almost sure that... No, I'm, I'm positive that you can move this. Maybe you can't on the Uzo? Is it only with the... Uh... Am I crazy? Maybe I'm crazy. I'm so sorry. I guess you can't move this. Fine, fair enough. I, I'll just... I'll try to figure out what I'm doing with that anyway in a second. Let's get the ship back. She should be fading. Yeah, she should be fading stern. Okay, abaft of us. And now let's uh, do this once again. Next bump, we'll jump on the Uzo and we'll grab this. Okay, come on, come on, come on. There's a jump. Very good. Now what we do is we just wait an extended period of time and we can measure out the distance she's gone and knowing the distance that she's gone for an exact amount of time is going to give us distance per time which should shout which should sound a lot like a velocity because it is like meters per second kilometers per hour miles per hour etc so we're just going to make that uh, range ourselves we're going to do the calculations ourselves and it's even helped a little bit more because we can convert that back to knots, which is what our TDC is going to want, speed in knots. Well, we can use that conversion. We can do that conversion with our little nifty chart on the right here. Um, a stenograph, a stenometer. St st I forget what this thing is called. There's a fancy name for it, which converts very quickly from one units of one to units of another. Hmm. So, we're back on board U-46. Welcome aboard again, Warco. Welcome up to the bridge. U-46, the terrible turtle, and her lovely insignia, which I am continually falling more and more in love with. <laughs> Let's get the moon side of it. There it is. Truly an image to be feared. So we're going to plow through the waves at a head standard, just because we want to create a little bit more space. I'm suspecting, and normally this is why you don't need to uh, do, sh you don't need to speed out the ships like I'm doing right here, because we are cheating. We are using. I mean, when you look at a ship, you don't know exactly how far away it is. If you wanted to do that, you should identify it and use the trick, the stedimeter on the periscope. That's the ranging thing, or on the uzo. This thing, you can use that to get an approximate range. But we're cheating. We know the exact range because I can just. Click it. <laughs> uh, this is cheating. Yes, definitely. And by the way, now that we've gone a little bit further away from her, I will put us on a parallel course. Um, how far? What's our like distance? Let me use the compass for this. So we're about five and a half kilometers uh, left, or I should say northwest, um, of her parallel line. Now we're making another parallel line separated by about five kilometers. So that means eventually at the end of our, our arc, we're gonna have to make a trapezoid, which curls back in. So we're doing the trapezoid maneuver. <laughs> but at the very end, we're gonna tilt 90 degrees to here because as I, I think I mentioned this before, I do prefer the decocaine method, which should put us um, 90 degrees to her direction. Our direction of travel should be 90 degrees to hers, perpendicular to hers, um, when we're firing the torpedo. So, I've had a lot of success with that method, so I'm going to keep it up, but I've said this before already. You can have a lot of success with the German TDC. It's extremely accurate if you set everything correctly. Um, if you don't use map contact information, it's much more difficult to not use the Dickocane method. So the Dickocane method becomes much more important when you don't use the map contact stuff, because you all you need to know for the Dickocane method is to get her speed. And if you just stand off and watch a ship from a distance for long enough, um, you can generally figure out, is she fading abaft? Is she going to the bow? I mean, which direction? Is she going faster or slower than you? And you can probably guess an approximate range based on the distance. There's a lot of different things you can clue yourself into. The biggest clue for me is usually just knowing that merchant ships at this time, at least in this game, very typically travel at six knots. That's the standard, that's the default that I always choose if I don't know anything else. Um, the lighter ships can go up to 9 or 10. I've even seen a few going... Uh, if you remember in the teaser video, we had those two auxiliary cruisers. I think they were moving 12. And that's a bit more of a challenging shot. Because the faster speed they are going, obviously the... 
a smaller you have a smaller error of window uh, window of error that you can um, that you're in in order to hit the ship it'll probably make a lot more sense just when we're actually firing torpedoes but for now yeah a slower ship is easier to hit and I don't think that's a surprise to anybody so we do have a lot to talk about when I get out of this in fact probably while we're so really what I want to do here knowing that that's her thing I'm going to set this so it doesn't do anything right now you can see in the bottom right over here my um, direction is not changing but once I let go immediately once I let go this thing is going to change my course very slightly but this looks more or less parallel to me so I'm actually gonna come out a little bit just I don't want to be detected so right click and there it goes so we're just moving a little bit left I don't think she's spotted. Oh, good God, she's already spotted us. I mean, that's... Okay, let's stop and take a measurement of where she's at to try to get a rough approximate of her course, or her this distance she's traveled. So our uh, clock was going for, I don't know how long she's been turning around, you know, bobbling around in the waves, um, zigzagging for. So this is going to affect our speed estimate, but otherwise, if things wait, I think she just simply made a course correction. She does not appear to actually be turning. And we are very lucky that we actually saw her during this course correction, because we were going to go miles off in that direction, <laughs> completely unaware that she was no longer following that route. Okay, so that's um, one that helps our ranging information. That means our, our speed estimate should be more or less good. Let's use the compass for this. So in the five minutes and 10 seconds, she went a range of 1.2. Now five minutes and 10 seconds is nothing that we can know how to convert. Three minutes and 15 seconds is the normal conversion when you're looking at um, kilometers, minutes, and knots. Three minutes and 15 seconds puts you exactly on the dot that the distance they went, you just take that exact distance in kilometers as the knots. So if they went, for example, um, I don't know, 0.6 kilometers in three minutes and 15 seconds, then they would be going six knots. That would be your estimate. For this kind of interesting situation, we're going to go over here and grab more or less what 510 would be. This is a logarithmic scale, so you don't take a linear distance in between 5 and 6. You can see that the spacing between uh, 3 and 4, this is 3 quarters and this is half, but halfway would be more like right here. That's because it's logarithmic. Um, if you know anything about that, that should make sense. If not, uh, probably this isn't the right time to explain exponentials and all that. So, excuse me, let me slide this. Okay, so 5 minutes and 15 seconds or so. And she definitely doesn't look like she's zigzagging. She looks like she's just on a course correction. And I am not doing the right. Now we got to go back to five. So I'll just choose this. And she went a distance of uh, 1.2, which puts her at seven knots. I don't believe it. It's probably six knots. And this is due to um, inaccuracy of my measurement, especially this early in the war. You know, when you see slow. <laughs> Merchant ship going slow. I don't know. All these things are, to me, an indication just through experience. Experience that a U-boat captain probably wouldn't have in only November. But um, if we miss the torpedo, I'll just pretend that we didn't have this experience and that <laughs> it's a mystery. I don't know how we missed. It must be because we were inexperienced. Pretend that I, I don't play this game a lot. <laughs> so let's first set this new course to be whatever it should be. So it looks like... That's so funny. In fact, I'm going to mark this point on the map later. For now, I'm just going to put three X's as an indication that I need to do something here. But this is a point at which ships head from north northeast to northeast, uh, east northeast, I should say. Because it looks like it's actually east northeast. So let's get a new fix on her using our cheaty cheaty ways. And let's take this down quite a lot. She's now running at a, it looks like, oops. Yeah, okay, so she's running at about, can we call it 55, 60, 60? Just, um, just north of 60. 
Okay, just north of 60. Let's erase this one and just start a new one. It'll be easier. We were going to miss her by a lot. So just north of 60. So this would be 60, but we'd want to go just north of it. Something like this. Let's see if that more or less lines up. I don't want to, you know, estimate it too perfectly because we wouldn't have that kind of information. But I have enough, I think, to go off of. On top of that, I think our distance away is a good amount. Yes, we're like eight kilometers away, which at night basically makes us invisible. We could use the Uzo if we wanted and line up a torpedo shot, but what I'm going to do instead is move with a parallel course for some time to give us... We want to have time to set up our torpedoes. So we'll probably head about 20 kilometers this way, maybe about an hour, and then we'll do the... We're doing the trapezoid dance, like I said. Deep, whoop, and then we'll dip back in make our heading perpendicular to hers. Hopefully she hasn't done yet another course correction. And if all those things line up, the stars align and the gods like us, uh, we should find her moseying on her merry way over here, in which case, at what point, we will sink her with our first torpedo. So we can go to the Uzo, we can clear this. I can go back to here and put this away so it doesn't bother me. Uh, and I think that's everything for now, so let's speed on ahead. Well, first of all, let me make sure we have reasonable people. Okay, might be a good time for me to get my actual watch petty officer up there, because these are important times. Very good, so now we speed ahead. I can only go 32 because she's looking at us, essentially. And she's a little bit north of this line, even, so it looks like more north of 60 than I originally thought. Something like this. Probably like 57.5. Who knows? So we'll speed along our merry way. We'll go 64 now that we can. And it's not a bad time for us to even use flank speed. I mean, this would really would not be a bad time for us to use flanks, uh, flank speed to get ahead. Or, or at least I should say head full. I don't think flank speed would be necessary. In this case, it, the difference is pretty minor. Um, but this should probably be enough, and now we want to actually measure out with the protractor, more or less what a 90 degree turn looks like. So this is going to be our line of attack. I'm just going to basically be doing this by hand. Um, and then in order to get us to actually follow this course, it's going to slow down to normal now. We're going to make a lot of these clips on the map. Because if you get close enough, you trigger the waypoint and you start moving on to the next one. If you're not already in line, we could trigger the point like here. So if I did this right here, like you'd think, we'll trigger that point when we're here and we'll all start coming in at the next point at an angle. And then on the next one, we'll trigger it when we're like here and we'll come on at this one at an angle, etc., etc. So it's good just to, I mean, to min-max a little bit. We're going to overshoot a little bit just so that when we make our turn and everything, um, we should be almost already on course. And then if you just leave a lot of these, your ship seems to correct itself continually. It continually closes on. It's like the limit as something goes to... Um, some value as the number of points goes to infinity. <laughs> you get closer and closer to the exact bearing that you want. So that's what I want to do just to make sure that we are heading exactly 90 degrees to our target. Um, I didn't take any information but we can see around the time so this is 29 this was a uh, the time we spotted her was probably around here, 31, 33. It is now an hour and 20 minutes later. So an hour and 20 minutes later, if she's going, let's say, seven knots, just to give her the benefit of the doubt, an hour and a half later is down here, which means that she'd be moving about 20 kilometers. So we expect her to have covered about 20 kilometers since we last saw her, which was like a year or so. So she's supposedly somewhere just southwest, west-southwest of our 25 kilometer marker here. At this point, that, that gives us plenty of time to settle into position. 
And as soon as we hit our first nav point here, as soon as we begin our course correction, that's going to be my indication for us to go to periscope depth. Now, it's a it's wonderful water's out. There's no need for us to actually dive. We probably could do this attack on the surface, but you can always get a little bit closer with periscope depth. And this is a little ahistorical, I have to say, because there were a lot of attacks. Okay, there's our Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. clear the bridge, make our depth Tiefe. one three meters. So it's a little ahistorical to be using periscope depth. We didn't, our submarines didn't usually use periscope depth um, at the beginning of the war. They, I mean, they could, but uh, attacks were more common using the Uzo. I think this is showcased by Das Boot, even. But this is going to help a lot of things. First of all, um, we won't be bouncing around as much. <laughs> Go ahead and slow down to a head one third. So assuming she's somewhere over here, she's going to be closing the last eight kilometers, which is going to take her... I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. And we're gonna be doing the last four kilometers. So we may have dived a little bit early. I, I prefer to be going slow the entire time. <laughs> that's fine, I, I made a mistake, I came in. I dove a little too soon here, but that's fine. The good news about this is we should also get the hydrophone contact soon, assuming our hydrophone operator is doing his job. Not a bad time, damn it. Three of these guys are not like the others. These three, obviously the ones. I got them mixed up. I forgot to take them out of electric before I dove. Yep, those are the three, so please move these guys. Actually, keep them in diesel for now, that's fine. But this is the crew should be all together. These are one group one and group two, and I don't like to intermix anything about those. In fact, it's really time to replace some of these guys too. Goodness, we have... Plenty of gentlemen who are asking for a break. Ah, uh, yes. The crew replacement minigame. One of my favorites. Okay, good enough. And good enough. Alright. Fantastic. Alright, we're just waiting for my officer, my hydrophone officer, to give me... I guess he's a petty officer, yeah. So we're waiting for the hydrophone operator to just give me a hydrophone reading. Any day now. There it is. So she's definitely a lot slower than we thought, which means she probably is only going, let's go ahead slow, and she's probably only going six, six knots because it's taken her a long time to make the journey. In fact, it's taken her so long that we, we may want to go even slower because <laughs> we only have to come in the last three kilometers and she's gonna be doing another probably 15. Is our speed one-fifth of hers? Not yet, but it will be if we go all stop. Now going all stop is a bit of a weird thing to do in a submarine because your depth keeping was mainly done, especially the fine-tuned corrections, is mainly done with your, well, very difficult to see at this point, but dive planes. Here's our stern dive plane. And if you're not moving, like I've already mentioned, they, just like the aerodynamics in the car, these aren't gonna be effective. Doesn't matter how many spoilers you have on a car, if you're not going, if you're not moving anywhere, there's no effect. But we're just gonna go all slow, or all stop for a little bit because it doesn't matter if we don't keep the good depth right now. We just need to hang out, kind of use our, um, just use our ballast tanks to try to keep us under the waves. And that's just so our hydrophone operator can keep a good bearing on this incoming target. At this point, I'm going to speed ahead. And we'll just wait for her to approach. There she's coming in nice and slow. We could also be ranging her this way, by the way. This would probably give us a very effective range. Because we know, well, we might have overshot a little bit with our line. Oops. 
Okay, well, she's about... Uh, she's probably still too far away to see. Let's go ahead and raise our attack scope anyway. It's possible we'll be able to get a reading from her. Should be about 90. Now, what I'm eventually going to do... She's... How far away again? About... Probably eight kilometers, and how far are we away from her probable probable target too? Eight two. Okay, yeah, I, I'm gonna encourage us. Well, I'm not gonna encourage us. I'm the captain. <laughs> I am Kaloon. I'm gonna ask us to go. I'm gonna ask. Here I go. I'm so polite. I'm going to demand. I'm going to issue the order for one knot, which should be. If I can actually do it this way, this might be better. This should be. Um, 50 RPM. So we'll just move through a bunch of parts to get a good view. You can see on the... These are the RPMs, port and starboard, that we're going about 50 RPMs, which is a very, very safe silent speed. Now, I'm not doing this for silence in this case because this ship almost certainly is not going to be listening on hydrophones. And we're going to be almost in like too silent for her to notice, even if she was. The main thing I'm just doing this is to give us enough forward momentum so our dive planes are effective in helping us keep depth. Alright, that all being said, let's see what kind of... What are we looking at here? She's about 70. Can we get anything? Nothing yet. Pretty calm waters. This doesn't... Ah, uh, yeah, that looks like 7 meters per second still. Look at how much our periscope is extending out of the water. I'm not worried about us being seen, and we're moving slow enough that... Like, fully extending the scope... I'll move it down a little bit, but... Fully extending the scope is not dangerous in any way. One, we're almost invisible because our periscope is leaving, like, no wake. And this is just a single little pylon sticking out in the huge ocean. Extremely hard to see. On top of that, I mean, it's the only person or object we would fear detection from at this point is an airplane because we would be able to hear any kind of sound contacts going this slow. If there was any warships in the area, we would be alerted to their presence with the hydrophones. Okay, so what we're probably going to do is fire torpedo one. Yes, we're going to set this to fast impact. We need to identify the ship before we make our depth. Um, I'm not going to preemptively put in any of this stuff, although I'm like feeling already confident that her speed is 6 knots. And we don't know exactly at what distance we're going to engage. Probably her angle on the bow uh, is going to be, I'm guessing, 81 from previous experience. So if you know your torpedo is moving 44, and just to show you guys that, we can see that these move at 44 knots, our steam torpedoes move at 44 knots when they're on the fast setting. And that's the setting I'm using. So what you can do is actually range out the angle of attack for a Dick O'Kane um, method, method of engagement. We'll just go 44 this way, so 4.4. This is 3, this is 425. Let's zoom in. So I can get, this is 4.5, so this is 4.4 four exactly. Okay, now I want to go down from here. She's moving six knots, so we'll go, yeah, six should be right in the middle of this. So the distance here then, or sorry, not the distance, I want the angle. So let's do the protractor. The angle that I'm going to identify here is going to be the angle I should fire at. And it looks like it's going to be 7 degrees. So basically, if, my, if I'm at 90 degrees to my target, their target is moving south to north. Let's pretend. So south to north, and its movement is 6 knots. So even though this is in kilometers, it's fine. I'm just trying to show a triangle here, basically. If I fire at 90, if I want 
my if my tr heading is um, 90 degrees from the from their movement, so here's our 90 degree intersection. The question is, when do I fire my torpedo dead ahead? When do I fire my torpedo dead ahead, knowing it'll cover 44 distance, in order for them to cover the six? So basically, the angle your 44 and whatever the speed of the ship is triangle makes, in this case, seven degrees, is the the angle I want to fire at. So I already know if I wanted to set my attack scope, I could just do this. I can go to about where seven is and I can click check. Now this is not gonna mean anything because the gyro, I mean the gyro angle doesn't know anything because I haven't put in all the other plots, which I should be doing. For example, if I did six, and this, this is the key thing, you have to know the speed. Obviously everything depends on the speed. And knowing that uh, I'm firing at about seven degrees to that, you can just take the angle on the bow as approximately uh, whatever that number is, um, minus 90. So basically, she's going to be moving, if I demonstrate with this again, what's my angle on the bow? Um, I'm ch asking if we're looking at her, so she's this, she's looking this way, right? What is the angle on from her bow to me? And so we just kind of follow the same line, and we get 82 degrees. So you can see that the best, I mean, you can do it exactly like I've done. And so we know now 82 degrees will be the angle on bow. But you don't have to do it exactly. You can just usually assume that whatever seven degree angle I got, just take 90 minus that. And you're going to be able to get what their angle on the bow would be. So we take 90 minus 70, sorry, 90 minus 7. And we're going to get basically just right in between. It's really hard to gauge, but right in between the 85 and the 80 mark. It's very hard to see, um, but that's fine. It would be nice if you could zoom in on this, but maybe there was no option for that. So, so that these two things are now what we want in our computer. The range technically does not matter. If you're following this correctly, it doesn't matter how far away they are. Your torpedo for every whatever, if you're firing at seven degrees, your torpedo is always gonna move the same amount right and left to hit them as they're moving up and down. Because this angle, seven degrees, doesn't care when this when it hits the other side of the triangle. If I made the seven degrees all the way over here, whoops, all the way over here, that's still seven degrees. Or if it was only to here, that's still seven degrees. So the cool thing about the Dickocane method is you do not have to get the ranging correct at all. Now I still try to because uh, I don't know I'm a perfectionist or whatever, but we can just arbitrarily set it at, let's say, whoops much. We can arbitrarily set it at uh, t 2 kilometers. That's fine to me. Now my bearing is going to be what I already determined on my attack periscope as 7. So now what you can see is with all this the gyro angle is 359. And that tells me more or less I did everything correctly because my gyro angle should be, if I did everything perfectly, 0 degrees. And 359, 0, you don't have to sweat this. At the distance we're launching we're going to be A-OK. -okay. So there it is, the big <laughs> talk about all this nonsense about the Dick O'Kane method and all that. The interesting question is now, can we see our prey? She should be, well, I don't have to, no, I'll race this little guy. We know seven degrees is fine. Can we see her? She should be at about 74 degrees from us. We're pretty much dead on. Doesn't look like we can see her quite yet. So down scope, I'm just going to do this. It, we don't have any risk of really being detected, but I'm still going to do this as like a, I guess really good practice. It's good form, more than actually needing to put my periscope down. So we'll drop it a little bit. I'm going to leave it just slightly up. It doesn't matter. But I do this so that um, if you want to bring it down, almost all the way, it still decreases the amount of torque the water is putting on the periscope. These things were extremely robust. They could handle being fully extended at uh, at least two knots. And we're going slower than that and it's not fully extended. So blah, 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 I'm sure it's fine. You can't, you cannot break the periscope off in this game as far as I can tell from moving high speed underwater. But I mean, that is a concern, right? This periscope, <laughs> it's, it's there is a force being exerted on it. And the higher it is, the more that torque is Okay, 
This is turning into a math session, which I didn't anticipate. So let's shut our mouths and wait for this vessel to approach. I don't like that she's so close. In fact, how close will she be if we continue on our current... Well, we're okay. I think. Six and one, we'd be practically on top of her. All right, so let's go ahead and just go reverse slow for a little bit. Just to, this is gonna ruin our depth keeping and all that, but like I said, I don't really care. We're just gonna back ourselves up a little bit before we once again go forward that little tiny bit. Because again, you want for depth keeping purposes to maintain always some kind of movement. Doesn't matter if it's forward or back, we just need our dive planes to function. Okay, back forward, I mean back. <laughs> Not back. Forward again. <laughs> back to forward. That doesn't make sense. Now let's again check our... Oh, <laughs> the problem is... Ah, I forgot that I'm following a course. And once your ship knows it's following a course, it tries to move backwards towards the course if your ship turns backwards. So I've completely mucked up my direction of movement. That's a, entirely an amateur mistake. One that I'm already very well, very well aware of. No, 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 no. Hard, 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 hard to starboard. Please continue. Return to that course. In fact, we'll just have to do it this way now. We'll have to give her some exaggerated orders. Hopefully to get her going the correct direction in time. All the while, the merchant ship creeps closer. Well, she's about at uh, five kilometers now. We probably should see her on the attack scope. I don't really know the angle. So she's at just under 80. Up scope. Maximum extension. Scanning. Well, I still do not see her. I'm not getting anything. Oh! Okay, well, she's at 73, but I don't see her, so... We'll just move the scope down a little bit, just a hair, and we'll speed along. How long does it take me to sink a ship? Well, a very long time. We've already been going at, at this for 40 minutes, and I haven't even talked about all the other stuff we've done. Okay, good, we're actually detecting her now. Let's get our line set up with her, more or less, so I know what kind of range I'm calculating. We're actually a bit far away, so I'm not worried about going um, slow at this point. Good, uh, it looks like we're gonna correct our course a little bit, so let's do this. Take this one slightly over so that we don't, we can course correct a little bit better. That's fine. And she is at 55. Up scope. I see her. Only just, but I see her. In fact, I see her. We might even be able to identify her. If I'm not mistaken, the smokestack is in the middle. She has a very far forward uh, post and a very far rear post. And I think the smoke is being produced from the middle of the ship. In fact, I think I know what this ship is already. It looks to me like a, I don't know what they're called. It's got a, a silly name. It's pretty close to the back. Not this one. There. I think we have a tramp steamer here, unfortunately. <laughs> it's not really worthy of a torpedo. We do have deck guns available. But hey, I've done all the calculations. Why mess it all up now, even though it is only a tramp steamer? We'll go ahead and identify this. I'm pretty sure this is what it is. 
as it has that. And we'll check it as it gets closer, but for now, leave that identified, down scope, and let her get a little bit closer. See any better now? Up scope. Not really. This is fun to me, by the way. I really enjoy just peacefully gliding under the waves and letting our prey creep up on us. Rather than, you know, tearing after them with the deck gun blazing. This is kind of my preferred pace. Make your calculations, just be damn sure about them. I think we've done that. I could start ranging her out now as well, um, which would give me a confirmation. We might as well do that, although the we won't have much time. But we might as well do it. Just um, I can show it. I'm probably going to keep six as my guess, but uh, for security reasons or whatever, whatever you'd want to say, what we can do is. And click. So we can range her out for maybe 3 minutes and 15 seconds. So we can get the um, 1 to 1. I can showcase that. So let's go faster, a little bit faster. We have to fire, remember, when she gets to 7 degrees on scope. Until then, we just wait and see if our conf uh, if we can confirm the identification. So far, it still looks to me like it's a tramp steamer. Okay, we're getting a little bit closer. Uh, bring this and click. Okay, let's check what this is. What are you? And it's 0.6, exactly as we thought. Now this does round, so you can see it jumps from 0.5 to 0.6 here. The actual 0.6 is in the middle, and where it jumps to 0.7 is 0.65. So this is, as we completely expected, moving at 6 knots. We'll reset this, put this away for now. And the last thing we need to do is just confirm uh, the, uh, the nation. <laughs> Who owns this ship? We don't really want to sink any Swedish or Norwegian or any Dutch ships. We've already had that problem. No, we didn't sink any, but we almost did. <laughs> I should have sank that damn Dutch military ship. I don't know what the heck she was doing. I think you're penalized um, prestige for doing that, but yeah. by the rules of engagement, I think it would have been fine. All right, so speed ahead a little bit more. How much further is she? Oh, we are gonna move a lot faster, actually. We're way off from our expected range. I really would prefer to be much closer. Yeah, really would prefer to be much closer. It doesn't matter if when she's at 7 degrees, we fire, and that's just final. But the margin of error decreases the closer you get, so let's try to decrease that margin of error. Actually, I don't think we should go. Eh, we'll probably just go ahead slow, just to avoid our periscope being identified. Alright, gentlemen. Stand by. Ahead slow. Okay. Let's go to 50 RPM now. A bit less than that. Periscope a little. I forgot, I left the periscope up. I should not have done that. But that's okay. Um, by the way, confirmation. Whoops. Okay, that's one of the reasons why you do keep the periscope up. I cannot confirm that this is a tramp steamer because I don't see the other. I don't see these secondary things. I'm still pretty sure that that is what this is. But. See, it doesn't have the... Oh, oh, it's a small freighter. Well, that's nice. It doesn't make much difference. The draft for both of these is about seven. 
So we'll probably leave ours just under five, which is, I think, exactly where it's at right now. So this, in fact, looks more like what we're dealing with, because it doesn't have the, um, the four vertical posts. It only has two. So let's lock, identify. And now I could range out things, but I actually don't want to do anything. I just want my gyro angle to be um, the torpedo solution to be calculated based on the stuff I input. If you do any of those things, it'll override your settings here, so I don't want that. In the end, we're going to make the attack for just slightly under 1500. So I'll set this. Again, this is the least important if you're doing the decocaine method. So it does not matter. Everything else is very important. Angle on bow, bearing, um, speed. These things are very important, but everything else is not. We're going to set this to just about where it was, maybe slightly under 5. I prefer the deeper hits. There's more stress on the very keel of the ship, the very bottom. So that's the preferred area of impact for us. Uh, much more likely the ship cannot control the flooding. If you are able to hit it right at the keel, it just this is a, a real stress point. So uh, if you can weaken that, the ship is uh, has the possibility of just simply breaking in two. All right, first target. We've almost lined it up. So there's really nothing to do at this point other than set our attack periscope to about seven, ask the hydrophone officer to follow the nearest sound contact. We're gonna put our periscope just a little bit below. And now we're gonna watch as the hydrophone op operator slowly guides her in. When she gets to about 20, maybe 15, we will upscope. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. For some reason, my game is bugged and it doesn't give me the beautiful notice when you open your torpedo tubes. But we can just view it for ourselves. So go ahead and open torpedo tube. Open tube one. Tube one is open. No. My god, <laughs> Steam wanted to update suddenly, it's uh, horrifying, I thought that we were crashing after all this work. But no, uh, tube 1 is flooded, prepare to fire. She's still at 36, a little bit too far away for me to upscope. The tension is building, I'm very excited. Everything is correct. We go to F2, we can see that the torpedo one is open. You can't click on these, unfortunately. I was hoping you could to open and close, but that's fine. Um, it's responding to my keyboard commands, and that's all that really matters. What do you think? Do we have it? No? <laughs> I guess not. You're not supposed to say those kind of things in public. So pull me aside if you want to say something negative. I think, however, that we're in. For, we're due for a hit. The tension is palpable as we push on a little bit further. Make sure my gyro angle is set. It is. Okay. 26. 25. 23. 22. Okay, getting closer now. Up scope. Prepare to fire. Torpedo is flooded. I've double checked everything. Just wait for it to creep into our sight and we'll launch. Last few seconds. There she is. Come on, water. Don't do me dirty like that. We are going for a center hit. Prepare to fire. And los. Down scope. And just because I like you guys, we'll follow our torpedo underwater. 
Frachter auf 5. Entfernt sich. We expect that at the same time our our hydrophone operator tells us bearing 000, this torpedo impacts. Should be getting very close now. Zero one. There she is. Perfect. Torpedo impact. Exactly where we wanted it. Ah, very good. So we probably hit her a little bit four of where I wanted, but I do get a little nervous. <laughs> I typically fired two torpedoes. One where I did and one much aft of that. Uh, that's okay. A single hit on only a 2,000 ton ship, probably going to do her in. Not that it really matters, because in fact, it's perfectly acceptable for her to not go down. We'll just put her down with deck guns. Thank you, Hydrophone Operator. I no longer need you to give us constant updates. So that is how I undertake my torpedo attacks. Um, at this point, we don't really need to do anything but mirror her. And because she doesn't have any weapons, what I can do is... Let's go... Let's go all ahead one third. And just start shadowing her. We know that her course was just north of 60. So we'll set a, a parallel course, more or less, and we'll just kind of listen to her as she putzes along. Pretty soon I'm expecting the ship to, to, to sink though. Just because she doesn't quite have the tonnage to be resilient to even a single torpedo attack. Some of the bigger ships, you know, they will take more than one torpedo because they're so big. Their flooding control systems are adequate. Not because they have more sophisticated flooding control systems, but um, they have so many bulkheads that losing one or two the same way you would lose that on these smaller ships is just overall, compared to all the bulkheads on the ship, all the water compartments, not as big of an impact. And if nothing else, the fire will also continue to erode at her whole integrity. I think that um, the Grey Wolves mod models in three things for damage. One is obviously just the whole integrity. How much damage have you directly done? Two is the flooding, and this is the most common way that you'll sink ships. Um, and three is also fire damage. There's also critical hits, which impacts hull integrity, I think. You can get critical hits, which um, uh, greatly impact the hull integrity. I think that's how it works. But if I'm not mistaken, and I very well could be, but if I'm not mistaken, fire damage can slowly eat away at the ship's hull integrity as well. So... I guess uh, maybe uh, it would be reorganized as one whole integrity, which includes fires, like we're seeing here. Two is the flooding, which is always the most common way for these ships to sink. And then three would be the, the critical hits. Hmm. So if we had hit her a little abaft where we did, we're able to view here. Uh, damage is not modeled in any kind of sophisticated way, and it's pretty dark, so it's hard for us to actually see the damage unfortunately. But if we we hit her, you know, about here, and if we had hit her just here, I would be 100% convinced that she'd sink. Not being 100% convinced, we will have to shadow her for a little bit and just see if she decides to concede or if she needs a little bit more encouragement. For this, I do... I don't mind going to the surface, but it does reveal our presence, and from a role-playing standpoint, I have a small problem with that, just because then they're going to know, they radio back to German High Command, or British High Command, or they, you know, QQQ, whatever the case is, um, QQQ being the universal symbol that you're under attack by a merchant raider. Um, we are a merchant raider, <laughs> they are a merchant, it seems like the appropriate situation to use that. So if they don't know any better, they know it's probably a torpedo, but if they don't have the time to radio with that, if they see our, us, maybe it's a little easier for them to say it was certainly a submarine. I don't know. I'm kind of waffling back and forth on this. If you can remain undetected, why not? That's the bottom line. So we'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit and see if she's going to take on water. She might need some encouragement. We're 
more or less staying on course with her, going just ahead uh, one third, which is good. She's still turning engines, obviously, because our hydrophone detector hasn't. Up. Oh, okay. The moment he stops detecting her is the moment that <laughs> she's going down. But she's persisting. Just a side note, um, just throwing in stuff while we're watching her zigzag along. At the end, if she does end up sinking, it's doubtful that the torpedo impact killed many of her crew. But in World War II, the majority of seamen, men at sea, that were lost, uh, were lost not because of explosions or impacts or torpedo hits, um, magazine eruptions. Now, the majority of people died from exposure to the elements, and that usually translates into <laughs> being in a lifeboat for too long, or starvation or dehydration, these kind of things. Basically, if uh, you weren't rescued in time. So although a lot of people try to get the lifeboats and all these things, even your ship not immediately exploding all all the hood was really no guarantee for your survival. It was, um, like I said, more, more people died even after they got to the lifeboats than died from the initial contact with the enemy. So what do we do? We don't want to wait too long for deck guns, so I'm going to go ahead and surface now and finish her off because basically the longer we wait, the s theoretically, I'm not sure if this is modeled in, but theoretically the higher chance that, oh, you know what? No, she was just taking on water heavy from a wave there, but she's probably going down is the thing. So we can see what it looks like as we rise to the surface. And now she knows. She knows her fate. And she knows it even more now that we're starting to crew our deck guns. Okay. Being underwater, not good. Thank you. Come on. Come on, gun. Keep turning. We're underwater so much of the time that it's actually hard. <laughs> She's going down. I don't think we need to do anything here. Her nose is just dipping so much. It's like, quite dangerous for us to be even moving along the waves. For man overboard reasons, not for any other realistic reasons. Uh, In-game reasons, I should say. Just for it's purely for realistic reasons, not for game simulation reasons. I'm guessing she's about 1,500 to us. I can verify that if I want. I should have moved left when I went right. Okay, there she is. Yeah, I mean, look at that. She is pitching forward. I'd say that's about a four degrees pitch f to bow. List is left and right, but I can't remember. I think it's pitch is forward. Is the bow stern? I don't think she's going to make it. You know what? We'll just shadow her for a little bit longer. And let's see what happens. Okay, wow. I'm going to get very sick. We stay on like this. She's a she's a real fighter. The fire hasn't gone out, so I mean that should be doing damage, but this might take too long. We're just here to rescue her, of course. <laughs> this is not nefarious at all. All right, well, let's just do it then. Let's get it over with. Let me range her according to this. It's not even rangeable. 
Yeah, I mean, she's just darn close. I would have guessed that she was more than 500, but... Alright, fair enough. We'll aim for the part that's sticking out of the water the most. Because that's the, most, the part I'm most likely to hit. Perfect hit. Started a fire. Maybe one more midsection, and then we just... Uh, just don't want to waste too much. It doesn't seem worth it. She's all but dead. Whoa, that was something. Oh, uh, bigger fire starting. Good stuff. One more to her bridge, and then we'll call it a day. That was definitely to her bridge, but not low enough. Because I think we can sink another ship with only 16 shells. How are we looking? I mean, she's beat, man. She's so beat. I, I mean, just abandon it. Give it up. Don't make us keep shooting you. Gonna make us keep shooting you. Okay. Well, I tried. I tried to give you a chance. Wait for the gun to fall. We are targeting slightly to the left. Wait for the waves. Whoa, big, big pitch with their gun. Another good hit. Maybe just one more, and I <laughs> I'll let this one go. Ah, gun's loading always when I'm ready to fire. <laughs> one more. One more. Ah, there it is. Fire on her bridge. Well, if that isn't enough to do her in, I don't know what is. So we'll just stand by a little bit longer. I know this episode's running quite long, but that's okay. There's several things I wanted to say, like how off-camera I had already recorded two other episodes, one at an hour long and one at another 20 minutes, that both did not make it because... I, you know, I didn't. I used my deck guns, and then I was going to torpedo another ship. It turned out to be neutral. You can see here, this one is not neutral. Clearly flying the British flag. I'd be very surprised if she could handle all that we've given her and just keep on ticking. Come on, just give it up. We're going to have a lot of people who are pretty tired, too, <laughs> after this. I'll stop. Our batteries should not have recharged. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. I don't want to keep you guys too much longer, because this video's already gone on pretty long. But she just really won't give up. Fair enough. Well, we'll just use the rest of our shells then. She has asked for it. She's not given us any sign that she's willing to surrender. And we're forced to react in violent manner to that. Just use it. We have to use deadly force to put her under the waves. We can't walk away. We used a torpedo and already we've committed so many resources. We expect to kill. Whoa. Come on. Hold. Hold. Oh, I'm way too high. Good thing I didn't fire that. Okay, let's get this on the down scope. Up a little. Good. Good hit. Even though that looked a little bit low, you could hear the explosion. It's actually a pretty good hit. Oh, this wave's coming over. Oh, we just managed to avoid it. Ah, uh, she's dead. Stop now. It doesn't look like she's moving. 13 is just right at the fringe of being able to sink another ship, too. <laughs> I think we just go plus 8, or times 8. 
Yeah, she's going under. Okay, we finally did it. <laughs> she's not able to control her flooding, you can see. Her bow is taking on more and more water. Whoop, saw some kind of weird explosion there. It looks like they put out that front fire. That's not good. But then I still have that fire in the bridge burning. And that fire aft. So wait, we do. I guess while we're waiting, I can actually explain all this other stuff. So you guys whisk, uh, missed a lot, basically. Uh, I didn't do much, but you missed a lot in terms of time. The last episode concluded when we were actually, we sank this ship here, I think. This was that small um, coal tender. From there, I proceeded back west, or sorry, east, northeast, and then did a little loop and came back. Didn't spot any ships. On the return, I did spot a coastal vessel, a coastal freighter, which I sank with deck guns. And that's the reason why I didn't decide to show that. Then we proceeded west, northwest, over to uh, just around, I wanted to basically navigate around this shallow region. And this is should be an area of high naval traffic around the exit of Lock U. Lock U. So from there we just did a, a circle around and came back and on the return I sank a motor um, boat or motor ship. I've, it's a ship that doesn't have... yeah she's definitely going down. We still haven't gotten the call that she's going down. <laughs> but let's go ahead and demonstrate the ship I'm talking about. Motor vessel. So this is the one. You can see it's only 110 knots, it's a, or 110 tons. Very small ship. So after that, uh, I came. I would decide to push north. I was going to investigate if there was another path, merchant ship path, just at the edge of the continental shelf here. You can see that, you know, the water dips off strongly, and I was going to see if maybe there was another merchant path um, up here. So we headed north, and over here I actually encountered a neutral ship. Then I came over here, decided, okay, that's enough of that. It's time for us to head back over to this western area. And heading south is where I encountered the ship, and I brought you in. So now you know. But I think at this point we can probably take a look at this ship. Oh, it's almost over for her. Not much left. She's dead in the water. Abandoned ship, hopefully, the order given. We won't be able to rescue anyone. There's no place for us to store any kind of prisoners. But there it is. She's going down. Well, Warco, that's our first torpedo attack. Very long, lengthy episode but a successful one. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, take care.